Hey everyone and welcome back to Art La Carte and in this episode I'm actually going to take you for a little uh, adventure with me. I went to my local aquarium and got to see some of the fun little creatures that live there and so let me show you one that I really enjoyed. So we just watched the feeding of the sea otters. It was really fun to see how they kind of ate all the food and swam around and everything. So I encourage you if you come to like some place like a, like a place like this to bring your sketchbook and to make quick little sketches of what you see. Or if you don't have a sketchbook, take your cell phone, take some photos, and then you can use them later on to do some reference sketches. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed the sea otter exhibit. In fact, I probably could have spent almost the whole time there watching these amazing little adorable little cuties. I wanted to take one home with me. They were so cute. But yes, I love the sea otters and I took a lot of photos and an insane amount of footage. In fact, when I was first editing this video together, I had like five minutes of this little guy eating his crab and I thought even though it's adorable I guess you know you guys aren't here to watch a cute sea otter eat crab you're here to learn how to draw a sea otter eating crab or something um so I thought yeah I probably should cut down the footage a little bit and get on to the drawing part on that but again going and seeing things in real life is so amazing and I highly encourage it but let's get on to the drawing so for this piece, I did use a couple different reference photos, more as a guide than an actual, I'm drawing this line for line. And, and don't get me wrong, a lot of artists do use reference photos and draw it line for line, and that's amazing. Um, some artists choose not to use reference photos at all. Some use them as kind of a uh, anatomy guide. That's kind of what I do. I like to look at them, but create my own thing. Um, I think that's always fun. So that's what I generally do. A lot of times you guys ask me to show you reference photos of things that I'm drawing, um, and I'm reluctant because it really doesn't look a lot like the reference photo, and I generally don't use one reference photo. I use a lot of different reference photos. So I just collect them, books and magazines, and of course going online is a great place to find reference photos, or taking my camera out and being able to take photos of things myself is awesome as well. So for this guy here, or this gal, because I'm going to draw a mama sea otter and her baby, I'm just sketching really, really lightly. This first part of the initial setup of the sketch is probably um, maybe one of the most important because if you don't get this part right, the rest of the, the picture is going to be off. And I can, t can tell you that I have so many drawings that I've done that would look absolutely amazing, but I didn't spend enough time in this part and make sure that everything was where I wanted it to be and the proportions were the way I wanted to have it be. And instead I rushed it and then you look back and you're going, yeah, that, that's a little off there. Well, that arm's kind of, you know, not the right place and blah, blah, blah. And it can be just the smallest little thing off, but it just makes the whole picture look off. So make sure to put in some time here. One thing you'll notice is I'm drawing really, really lightly. That's so as I notice when things are a little bit off. Like right now, the, the nose on the mama otter is really large. She kind of looks like she has a koala nose. Um, and in a little bit, I'll go back and erase that. But because I'm drawing super lightly with my pencil, when I go back to erase it, I'm not going to get that ghosting um, effect where you can kind of still see the lead that's ground into the pencil there. A lot of you guys send me um, copies of your pictures and sketches that you do and ask me to um, give you some tips and helps on how to make your sketches look better. And one of the things I can say is um, if you can, when you erase your pencil sketches and you can still see the lines underneath them, um, to know that you need to draw lighter, um, especially in this step. Um, all of this should be able to be erased. Um, so I hold my pencil um, back a lot farther because it lessens that pressure that's on the pencil and uh, makes it so that I can't grind the, the lead into the surface of the paper. So yeah, just kind of having fun looking for those shapes um, from my reference photos. So this really isn't like a tutorial on drawing an exact drawing on how to draw to, uh, a sea otter. Kind of more of the process. If you'd like to see a video on how to draw a sea otter, let me know in the comment section below. But I kind of wanted to show you the whole process from start to finish on making kind of a realistic looking uh, drawing here. And actually, I don't even have the whole thing on this. Um, I still have to color this picture, but I, I kind of wanted to show you this process first. 
Um, so yeah, I'm going to start inking this in. I'm going to use my Micron uh, pen. I think that says uh, 0.3 nib size. And I'm just going to go in and very carefully make in my sketches for my fur. And you're going to notice that as I'm doing these sketches, I'm just making very small little individual lines. Um, just to kind of outline the hair. Instead of drawing a line all around the sea otter for the shape of it, I'm just using my micron pen to create just little lines and textures that are going to help give the illusion of fluffy fur. Now, as it's towards the top of the sea otter's body where it's a little bit more dry, I'm going to have them kind of, you know, more individual. Whereas it gets down closer to the where the water is and they might be wet, I'm going to clump them together a little bit to help create that kind of wet, uh, wet effect. Um, at this point, I was still wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with this picture. I knew um, I was going to add some color to it, but I wasn't sure exactly how. Uh, and then I kind of came up with a really fun idea, which I'll share in a little bit with you. Um, but I wanted to add a lot of ink work to this and run, really create some textures with this. So you'll just see that I am going through and just meticulously finding all those little places where the fur would be ruffled and adding little tufts of fur out as well as adding in a little bit more shading um, where I want to push things back a little bit, but really taking my time. And as I got going on this, I began thinking, this is really going to be fun to color. This would be a fun coloring page. And then I got this idea. And I have done this in the past. I've made coloring sheets and um, have them up for sale on Etsy to, uh, to be able to download. And I thought this would be kind of fun to do these pieces where I want to record you know, actually uh, coloring this, but I thought, you know, there's some of you guys who enjoy coloring, uh, but don't like to draw. And so what I'm going to start doing is on some of these, I will stop at this point before I start adding color and I will go ahead and make it available digitally on my Etsy shop so that you can go and purchase a downloadable copy of this. And then um, you can print it out as many times as you'd like and color along with me during the coloring process of this. And I thought that would be super fun. So if you enjoy this and would like to see more digital copies of other pictures, let me know what kind of topics you would like. You know, if you like different kinds of animals or people or blah, 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 let me know. And um, I'll see about making more of these available for you guys as well. So I will leave links to my Etsy shop in the description box below so you can find those along with some of the other digital um, coloring pages that I have available. And then I'll be posting the video where I color this probably in a week or so. And if it's already posted, I'll put a link in the description box so that you can go straight to that video and color along with me. Well, this one is turned out really cute. I think this would make a great like Mother's Day card, I think. It would be very fun. Oh, my mom's not watching because now she's going to know what her card looks like. <laughs> okay. Anyway, well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And until next time, God bless you guys. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.